How cool was that finish? Lots to talk about on a Data Monday. Let's tee it up. Welcome to Data Access Golf, your home for rapid golf improvement. And now, from the thin air of the Rocky Mountains, next on the number one tee, your host, Aaron Stewart. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Data Access Golf Podcast. Thank you for joining me. Happy to be with you. Had a great weekend. That was some great golf. Sure loved watching the, uh, the RSM Classic. And to see Charles Howe, the third win again, was super cool. Kind of, uh, yeah, I, you know, I, I had, it was like I hadn't really remembered that I had forgotten him. You know what I mean? That he's been around and he's so consistent, consistent. But anyway, I wanted to kind of get in the discussion just right away. And every Monday from now on, we're going to kind of get into some data, some stuff that seemed interesting from the previous tournament, just to kind of geek out a little bit on data that's kind of in the name. So we're going to, get, we're going to focus on it. So a couple points that I kind of saw with, with Charles and, and what made that so interesting. One, it had been quite some time, right, since he won. That's what a lot of people were talking about, that it had been like 333 starts, I think is what I heard. When you saw the interview with him, he kind of, you had that, not the sense, he came right out and said he wasn't sure if he would ever be able to win again. So he was actually thinking about it as well which I think a lot of guys, right? I think, I think you saw Matt Kuchar was kind of saying that. I think Tiger definitely expressed some words that way that he wasn't sure if he would ever win again. And we've had a pretty good 12 months of people kind of breaking through after, after going quite some time without winning. So I, I was just trying to go through and think about looking at the winners and thinking about those that have kind of broken through. And you've got like Paul Casey, he broke through after like nine years. Uh, Phil, we already said, kind of broke through. Uh, Tiger, for sure. Gary Woodland. Jason Day. Rory McIlroy. They all had sort of uh, Webb Simpson, Bubba Watson. I mean, they all had some droughts going on in their in their playing and, uh, and, and not winning tournaments. And they all kind of broke through. So it was kind of a fun, a fun year. 2018 has been really fun watching these folks kind of come back and break through. And, and that's really what makes golf amazing is that it's a game that you can play for your life for your lifetime, right? And, and the technology and everything's moved to a point where even as we get older, we can play amazing golf. And even as we get older, we can get better. We can improve. I love that. That is so fantastic about golf. So really cool, really fun to see. I, I did see one of the data points that kind of jumped out at me that was just on the TV. And I believe that this is when um, Charles was playing the 18th hole in regulation. It said that he had hit 88.8% of his greens. Nine out of 10 greens he was hitting. And I know that in the, you know, both the playoff holes, he hit the green both times. Actually, no, the, the first time he was just a little off, so that probably didn't count. But still, 90% he was hitting greens in regulation. That's a lot of putts. And I thought his putting stroke looked fantastic. Really, really cool. I also kind of got to hear that he had he has been working with Grant Waite. I think Grant Waite has one of the most beautiful swings ever. So if you ever want to kind of, you know, again, I'll use the word sort of geek out again on a really cool golf swing. Grant Waite has got an amazing one. And there's some really good YouTube videos out there if you want to go search him. I actually had the opportunity when TrackMan first came out, I had the opportunity to go down and work with Grant Waite and Joe Mayo who that you know some is kind of known in in trackman circles as the trackman maestro i think he tweets under that handle and stuff so i got to spend a day with them and um it was fascinating they really kind of knew their stuff and explained trackman to us we got to go out and and be on the trackman on and off there was, i mean it was they were really hard to get hold of back then so they had one and i think joe joe was out of las vegas and they came up to southern utah to st george utah where we were hanging out and we had a full day with them, tons of training on TrackMan. I got to see how data sort of started getting into it. And that really, I mean, that's probably right around the time when I realized with all this new technology, we have an, an amazing opportunity to get better. TrackMan was tough for me to get my head around, 
especially just one, I think it was just an eight hour period where we were trying to get it all together. So making sense of all that information was hard. I then started following Joe Mayo online and he explained a lot of it. So it started to sort of settle in and solidify in my head. And then with, there's been really cool pieces of technology that have come out since that are more reasonably priced that we can use here in the office to get better. So it's been really a, a whirlwind. So it was really cool to hear Grant's, Grant Waite's name come up when Charles Howe was talking about who he's been working with. And, and Grant Waite has a, a different way of looking at the golf swing and his and it's absolutely a, a gorgeous golf swing. Definitely one to check out and, and look at. Some of the other cool points are some data that found out on Charles. Chucky Three Sticks. I, whatever happened to that Chucky Three Sticks? I don't know if that's uh, offensive. Maybe Charles has asked us not to use that anymore. But I always thought that was a very, a, a very funny little nickname for Charles Howell the Third. But and and then a couple of things. I noticed that he wasn't playing with any PXG logos anymore. And he was kind of one of the first guys that, that went PXG that I remember. And then he's not with PXG anymore. I, I looked a little bit. It looks like he switched sometime in October. So now he's not with PXG. He was definitely wearing Titleist stuff. And the what's, you know, what's in the bag that came out this morning, he's definitely all Titleist uh, other than a tailor-made putter. So something switched there. I don't know the story. I don't know if we ever will. I know that Charles Howell has always been one to um, change equipment. He just kind of goes with what's, what's best for him, which is great. I think that that's pretty amazing. And he has the flexibility to do that. I saw his, his career money now with the win yesterday is over $37 million. So financially, he's not too worried about things and he can go out and experiment with the best equipment. And with all the technology we have, you can easily figure out what equipment is best for you. And if you're making that kind of money and you're that consistent, you don't really need a great big equipment contract to keep you to keep you pretty flush right to keep you full keep your bank accounts full of cash you know 37 million bucks is spending us some pretty sweet uh interest that frankly none of us probably could spend with the way we live right now anyway so anyway so kind of some cool things that was his third win which is cool he's made i thought this was cool he's made 410 cuts over the course of his career he's played in 529 events He's had 90 top 10 finishes. He's had nine third place finishes, 16 second place finishes. That's amazing to me, 16. And then let's see, what was the other one? So far, official money so far in this FedEx Cup race, $1.4 million and he now leads the FedEx Cup. So really cool stuff. The highest finish he's ever had in the FedEx Cup is 13th. Uh, anyway, that, some other cool things. He picks up the ability to go. He's, you know, he's from Augusta, Georgia. At least his family lives there. And he now has qualified for the Masters. And I think that they were saying that that's been since like 2011 or something like that. So it's been, it's been a long time since Charles has been able to play in the Masters, which I'm sure, being a local boy, is his favorite tournament. So that's super cool. So anyway, I'm just really, really happy for him. And and that was another thing too, right? I remember when Charles came out, he was just a young kid. He was kind of the young gun out of Georgia Tech. He was just going to kind of take over things and he played really well and he's super consistent. But um, then all of a sudden after, after he sinks that putt yesterday, you know, ob the obvious emotion that came out of it. And then all of a sudden he's got two kids on his legs and I'm thinking, wait a second. He was like 18, like a year ago. How does he have two kids and a wife and it's just amazing how fast life goes by. And I, I just realized then that, that, you know, Charles Howell was one of my favorites and, and still is. I mean, he just carries himself. He's such a professional. He's always so honest in his interviews. He just seems like a really, really good guy. He's just so easy to like um, just because of who he is. To see him with a wife and kids was just kind of like, whoa, just a time warp, right? That was completely interesting and completely fun to see. So really a great weekend. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Looking forward to um, kind of the off season things can kind of be a little bit fun, but uh, definitely we've got no golf for a while. So we'll have to just work on our games and get better and see how things shake out. But a great data Monday as we'll start calling them. I also changed the tagline a little bit instead of let's get into it, it's let's tee it up. So let me know if you hate it 
or if you like it, but I think I'm going to go with that. Let's tee it up. I think it works better for what we're trying to do here. So again, I think Charles Howell is a perfect example of somebody who got hold of a teacher, a coach, who was able to show him, and I know that Grant Waite uses technology, was able to show Charles very instant and accurate feedback, and Charles was able to make some changes in his game. They also talked about putting Charles in difficult situations to put some stress on him where he could kind of see how his body react. And we talked about that a few shows ago, how competition can, can do that, right? Where you can put your game under stress and see where your weaknesses are. And so they were trying to simulate that in practice, which I think is brilliant. What a great way to do it. And it obviously worked. Charles seemed so poised and hit every shot and made a really impressive putt to finish it all off. Anyway, super cool, really grateful. Really fun to see the, uh, the older guys who are way younger than me still went on tour and use technology, really embrace technology to get better, to dial in their game and get better. And that's what we're all about here at Data Access Golf. Hope you have a great week. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone. I hope that if you're traveling, you do so safely. And that if, if you're going to someplace warm, I hope that you get to play a little golf and try some things out and feel some things. And then send those comments in. Let's talk about it. Remember, always, better data means better golf. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks. Thanks for listening to Data Access Golf with Aaron Stewart. Check us out online at dataaccessgolf.com. And we'll see you on the next episode.